This is the official new USS Enterprise, succeeding the Sovereign Class USS Enterprise E. It's a brand new Odyssey Class USS Enterprise F. The latest Star Trek Picard Season 3 trailer reveals that the Enterprise F is in service to Starfleet during the 2400s and is the flagship of the fleet. First appearing in Star Trek Online, an MMO video game, fans are eagerly awaiting the arrival of the ship in canon, and they now have it. So what do we know about this new Enterprise? Well, a fair bit. Honestly, my reaction to this starship turning up was like this guy's in first contact. Sir, there's another starship coming in. It's the Enterprise. Welcome to Trek Central. I'm your host, Captain Jack, and here we are talking about the Odyssey class once again. Before we warp into this video, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. But as always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, because if you're talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. Okay, engage. Star Trek fans have been waiting for news on the US Enterprise appearing since Star Trek Picard officially aired as a show. While we've been teased with flashbacks of the Enterprise D and comic book mentions of the Odyssey class, as well as book mentions of Captain Worf as the Enterprise E captain, we've finally got new confirmation on what is going on. It would appear the USS Enterprise E has been succeeded as the Federation flagship by the Odyssey class Enterprise F. Until the series airs, we won't know the fate of the Enterprise E. However, Sir Patrick Stewart teased that there will be multiple Enterprises showing up in Season 3 of Picard, so we've got that to look forward to, which you know is going to be exciting. So how about learning about the Odyssey class though? This is the next Enterprise, so you'll need to know as much as you can before it appears on screen. This is my favourite starship by the way, so thank me later. Let's go. The Odyssey class starship was active during the late 24th century, with one of its kind, the USS Verity, active in at least the year of 2381. However, it would not be until the turn of the 25th century that an Odyssey class starship would be honoured with the legacy of bearing the name Enterprise. The ship class was in service to Starfleet under the United Federation of Planets. The Odyssey class has a length of 1061 meters, a beam of 371.88 meters and a draught of 147.92 meters. With around 60 decks to the Odyssey class, that gave it around 2.5 meters per deck, which was standard for Federation starships. The vessel only needed 1600 crew to be operational, with a normal crew size much higher. Looking at the exterior of the vessel, the Odyssey class is fairly standard regarding Starfleet ship design, with a saucer section, secondary hull and two warp nacelles. The saucer section continues from a Sovereign class to have more of an oval shape, with a bridge module at its centre. Details along the saucer include phaser strips, windows, RCS thrusters and escape pods to name a few. The registry and name of the ship is displayed prominently on the front of the saucer, with a light to illuminate it. However, differing from the usual name and registration, it has the logo of the United Federation of Planets above it, which could denote the ship as being the flagship of Starfleet and the Federation. The front of the saucer has a large black brace to it, which could serve as some structural purpose to the saucer section, reinforcing its nose, considering a lot of damage to the Sovereign class was done due to ramming manoeuvres. So, perhaps Starfleet engineers are just anticipating the Enterprise might also follow the same tactical decisions as Picard, Deanna Troy and the Enterprise-E. The rear of the saucer housed the main shuttle bay of the Odyssey class, which will probably house a number of shuttles, including the most up-to-date shuttle, the Type 14 Long Range Shuttlecraft. Odyssey's saucer had a black curved chevron element to it, which connected its two almost sunken impulse engines on the saucer section. However, not only did it connect these, but it flowed into the two struts which connected the saucer section to the secondary hull. This markedly Odyssey is different from your standard Starfleet ship, with its neck actually being two struts on the side with a hollow in the middle. This gave an interesting silhouette to the front, some which others do not particularly like. However, these two structures would blend into the secondary hull, meaning it almost has no neck, and simply the secondary hull attaching the saucer from the sides. However, the secondary hull is rather standard, with a deflected dish at the front. The most interesting aspect of some variations of the Odyssey class was the rear of the Odyssey, with a dock support craft. Oh, and by the way, it can still source a separate in Star Trek Online, so keep that in mind. So the support craft. It was called the Aquarius, and very much looked similar to the US Janolin in design, being a singular hull connected to protruding nacelles. Support craft could assist the Odyssey class on a variety of missions, as a smaller shuttle to even support in combat. The nacelles as standard are connected to the secondary hull by a pylon, which shoots backward in this case. The cells themselves are fairly standard with a bussard collector at the front and blue grills along the side, so pretty standard among Starfleet nacelles. 
Now, one of the biggest aspects of the Odyssey from the inside is its bridge module, which is extremely open and has multi-level aspects to it which has your standard Starfleet configuration to it, with a central area for the captain and his senior officer sit, surrounded by stations that utilise holographic terminals for ship operations. Instead of a window view screen like we see on the Sagan class and the Neo Constitution class of Starfleet, the Odyssey class utilises a simple view screen. However, it still has windows to its bridge module, allowing visuals to be viewed when view screens are down. An interesting element of the Odyssey's bridge is that it has a transporter system at the rear of the bridge, which allows the senior staff to beam to and from the bridge module. This could be used to lock down the bridge from access to the rest of the ship in case of boarding, and still allow access to certain areas of the ship. The number of times we see officers on the bridge of a ship being given a mission, and then we have to take the whole turbo lift to a transporter room, has been noticed by Starfleet ship designers, and was taken into account when designing the Odyssey class. The ship has a turbo lift access to its side, as well as a ready room for the captain in standard Starfleet fashion. As we said previously, the bridge model has an underside to it, with stairs flanking the side of a bridge going to forward console, probably for specific sensor controls or various things like that. From a propulsion standpoint, the Odyssey class was equipped with Y1D's 46A Mark Warp Core, which can allow a ship to reach high warp speeds. Alongside this, the two impulse engines located on the source section are Car and Yard's Hyper Impulse engines, which allow the large vessel to maneuver at sunlight speeds. However, the ship also has 10 Ziv Ren SR83 impulse thrusters. Being the flagship of the Federation, on a mandate to explore strange new worlds, anomalies, and seek out new civilizations, the sensor capabilities of the Odyssey must have been up to scratch. And it is. Four DAYN75 multi band linear sensor suites. Four Omniwave passive sensor matrices and a single J Dome Omnidirectional sensor array located on the underside of the source section. That's a mouthful, by the way. And though we come in peace, we have to be ready to shoot to kill in Starfleet's case. And the Odyssey class is equipped with an impressive tactical array of 18 Mark X phaser arrays, with phaser strips for this located along the hull, giving a very good firing up for the Odyssey. However, the Odyssey class seems to only have four variable payload torpedo launches, with two probably being fore and two aft launches. With this variable payload, we can be sure that the Odyssey not only has the most up-to-date photon torpedoes, but also quantum torpedoes, and maybe even some surprise like chroniton torpedoes. Yep, you gotta look into what they are. But we must protect the Enterprise C until she enters the temporal rift. And we must succeed. Let's make sure that history never forgets. The name, Enterprise, got out. So let's talk about lore, and no, I don't mean Brent Spiner returning to Picard. The Odyssey class is named in honour of Odysseus, the Greek hero went on a daring voyage. But more than that, it honours the Odysseys of the previous Starfleet ships. So a better ship class than the name of being the USS Enterprise F. The Odyssey class itself is extremely versatile on its mission parameters as a Starfleet ship from strategic and diplomatic operations to crisis and emergency response. From flagship of a fleet with the Enterprise F to the USS Verity and its crisis response mission in relocating refugees. Now so far, we do not know the lore behind the Enterprise F, so we've only seen in a trailer for a short amount of time, not even knowing the fate of the Enterprise E. However, we do know some lore for the Odyssey class that may be canned the Star Trek Picard. The first Odyssey class we see in the Star Trek Picard Countdown comics with the USS Verity, an Odyssey class starship which was active in the 2380s as the flagship of Admiral Picard's fleet for the Romulan relocation effort. This ship would help evacuate colony worlds which would be affected by the upcoming Romulan supernova. However, we all know the Romulan relocation effort went badly. After the attack on Mars and the destruction of the Utopia Planitia shipyards and an entire fleet of Wallenberg class freighters, Starfleet scrapped the relocation effort and Admiral Jean-Luc Picard would resign in anger. What happened to the USS Verity is unknown, but it probably went on to do more missions just without Picard as its commanding officer. With at least an initial launch date of 2381, the Odyssey class is canon and has been around a lot longer than it has been in Star Trek Online, where they were only launched in 2409. Whether the Enterprise F was made in the 24th or 25th century, however, is unknown, as we need to know more about the Enterprise E and when that was specifically decommissioned in the Star Trek canon. And talking about the Enterprise E, it was also revealed in the same book as the USS Verity, The Last Best Hope, that Worf would become the captain of the Enterprise E after Picard's departure and transfer to the Verity. Claiming that even though he does have that spot on his record from the Dominion War, he is a capable commander and captain of a vessel. And we've got a long way to showing how far the Klingon and Federation have come. But what about the captain of the Enterprise F? 
Well, in Star Trek Online, the captain of the Enterprise F is Captain Vakil Sean, an Andorian, who previously captained the Defiant class, USS Belfast, before its destruction. Personally, I would love if Sean did make a cameo in Star Trek Picard, but I don't think they need to cast him. Though, having Jeffrey Coombs play him would be pretty cool. I think a cameo of hearing him over the comms with the same voice actor in Star Trek Online would be very fun. Theory-wise, perhaps one of our Star Trek Picard cast is the commanding officer of the Enterprise F. Perhaps a certain Mr. George LaForge, who now holds the rank of Commodore in Picard Season 3. While he does wear his iconic Engineer's yellow uniform, you can see him in the trailer wearing Command Red. Maybe he does transfer to Command and take over the new Enterprise. Let's talk a little bit about the Star Trek Online canon of the Enterprise F, and maybe it might be connected to what the new USS Enterprise F might be up to in the future of Star Trek Picard's canon. The Enterprise F first appeared in the Star Trek Online mission, Boldly They Rode, as the new USS Enterprise, aiding to help defeat the Jem'Hadar forces occupying Deep Space Nine. These Dominion forces were the 2,800 ships that went missing in the wormhole during the Dominion War. They were merely temporarily displaced by the Prophets and not actually destroyed. They've cloaked! I'm not picking up any neutrino emissions. Wherever they went. I don't think they're coming back. The Enterprise therefore would also be present during numerous incidents in the 25th century, from the Janolan Dyson Sphere incident, an attack by Species 8472 on Earth, and the opening of the Delta Quadrant, the Iconian War, and the resurgence of the temporary displaced Klingons from the Klingon Federation War, a Klingon Civil War, and even the threat of a Terran Empire. The Enterprise F very much lives up to its name of an Enterprise, and just like that, I can't wait to see our Enterprise F in canon and on screens in Picard Season 3. Now, during the Iconian War, however, the Enterprise F would be heavily damaged, and would be refitted to the Yorktown configuration of the Odyssey class. In this configuration, the ship could house more crew of 2,100, as long as having shipwide improvements, including a more versatile deflector array, more specialised field projector equipment, more sensitive sensors, that's funny, and bigger engines, as well as defensive upgrades and improved automation. So what about behind the scenes information? Well back in 2011, Cryptic Studios, the developer of Star Trek Online, held a contest called Design the Next Enterprise. As the name suggests, players could design and submit their ideas for what would be the new Enterprise in the video game. The winner of the contest was Adam Isle, who designed the Odyssey Star Cruiser. Following his design, Adam Williams and Jeffrey Matson of the STO team fleshed out Adam Isle's design into the final form. Some minor detail additions were made and the ship was added to the game. It appeared to the player for the first time in the mission, Boldly They Rode, in which the Enterprise aids a combined fleet of Starfleet and Klingon Defense Force starships, in a battle to retake Deep Space Nine from a group of rogue Jem'Hadar soldiers. I have to say, Adam Arl must find it super cool that he designed what is essentially the next Enterprise, following the Sovereign class Enterprise E. But not only with the Enterprise F appearing in Star Trek Online, or comics, Finally getting to see it on screen must be a lifelong dream for any Star Trek fan. Adam recently tweeted about enjoying being a part of Star Trek canon history, which is a fantastic achievement. Production designer Dave Blast responded to Adam saying that he very much likes the Enterprise F. Therefore we can presume that the production team really do like the Enterprise F. However, it isn't as simple as porting over the game asset to the creators of Star Trek Picard, with more work having to be done. Since the start of their collaboration with Cryptic Studios, the creators of Star Trek Online in Picard Season 2, with more starships added to the Star Trek Picard era fleet, the pipeline is there, and we might be getting some more Star Trek Online ships in Picard Season 3 as well, so keep an eye out for that. Thomas Moroni, the Associate Art Director of Star Trek Online, recently updated the model of the Odyssey class Enterprise F, and in a line as bold as Benedict Cumberbatch isn't Khan, said he only rebuilt the Enterprise F for the Star Trek Adventures book. Regardless, this model has been upgraded for our screens, not only by Thomas Marone who seems to have done the bulk of the work in making this model, but also by the Star Trek Picard effects team under Brian Tosotsky, who finessed it for the appearance on the show. Overall, just like so many things under production designer Dave Blass, the team of Star Trek Picard is a massive collaboration effort, not only being in this 50 year old franchise and carrying on the legacy of the Enterprise, but also a legacy of over a decade for the Enterprise F with Adam R making his design in 2011, to that design appearing on screen in 2023. So that's all our information on the Odyssey class Enterprise F for today. Natch is a little bit difficult right now, as with the ship entering canon and Picard Season 3 not airing yet, we've got to blend limited canon information with the storyline of Star Trek Online, which is not related to the canon storyline of Star Trek Picard. Thankfully we'll be able to come back next year and command Lieutenant Commander Adam of the Trek Central team to do a full dedicated breakdown on the Odyssey class Enterprise F. 
So stay tuned for that, as I'm sure you're all looking forward to it. Until then, we await the arrival of a Star Trek Picard Season 3 on February 16th, 2023. Finally, I want to personally thank Terry Matalas, Dave Blass, Thomas Maroney, Adam Merle, and the Picard production team for giving the Starship life in the Star Trek Universe live-action canon. I love it, and I can't wait to see more of it on screen, and you know I'm going to be very much excited when it does. If you want to keep up to date on the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Captain Jack. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper, my friends. Goodbye.